Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Ticket. In today's video, I'm gonna showcase iOS 12 running on an iPad Pro. So iOS 12 was just recently announced and it's gonna be available to the masses all the way down in September sometime, but here's an early access beta for you guys to enjoy and see what's actually coming up. Now, first and foremost, let me go inside and show you guys that this is in fact iOS 12. So let's go to the settings. We go to the general, go to the software update. And as you can see, we are running iOS 12.0. Now, the very first thing I wanna talk about is called the grouped notifications that you're gonna find on iOS 12. So when you pull down the notifications panel, uh, there's gonna be some changes here. Everything is now grouped nice and clean. So any kind of notification you get from a certain app is going to be grouped together. And as you can see, uh, there's notifications underneath the actual notifications for the news application, for the YouTube application, uh, and also for the news application. And they're kind of separated by time. So uh, notifications that are recent in the last couple hours, they're gonna be in one window. And then older ones are going to be down here, as you can see, and this was three hours ago. But again, if you want to see all the notifications inside a group, you tap on that group, it's gonna expand that uh, one particular group and you can uh, start to look at them one by one, which is absolutely fantastic. You can also tap show less, it goes down, uh, it gets regrouped. And again, let me do it over here. And if you want to actually destroy a certain group, just get rid of it, you just tap on X and that group is going to just clear it up. So the whole thing is not gonna go away, but that certain, the, that one group that you are uh, working on is going to disappear. Now there's some other things you can do here. First and foremost, you can take actions on a group, just like that, if you swipe the right, you have these three options, manage, view, clear. Or if you expand it, you can take actions on the individual notification, okay? So that's also very good. Uh, the other thing you can do here is, if you swipe over, you'll see an option called manage. If I tap on manage, uh, it's gonna give me a brand new option that was not on iOS 11. So this allows me to get notifications quietly, meaning if I tap this, I'm not gonna see this notification from news in the lock screen, but I will see it in the notifications panel. So if I go to the lock screen, they're not gonna be there, but if I pull it down just like this, they are gonna be here. Uh, the reason for this is you can actually send not so important notifications directly to the uh, today's screen bypassing the lock screen. And of course, then you can just tap on turn off and that's going to turn off all notifications from that one app. So you can do this with any one of these guys, okay? Uh, you can do it with a YouTube, news, Twitter, whatever. So if I tap on this one, I can do it individually or I can actually do it en masse. Absolutely fantastic. Now let's move on to the next update on iOS 12. Now this is an update I can't exactly show you, but basically what they have done with iOS 12 is they have actually increased the performance of the overall tablet. So everything's gonna just feel faster. Uh, for example, if I launch an application, it's just gonna launch quicker uh, than if you were doing it on iOS 11 on the same iPad. So if I launch the news application or the, uh, the mail application or the notes application, every single thing is just gonna launch, launch and feel faster, which is fantastic. It's always good to have some of that extra speed. The next thing I wanna talk about is a couple of apps that they made a change to. Uh, the news application, for example, has been revamped a little bit. Uh, normally you would have a bar at the bottom, but now they have changed that into a sidebar on the top and then you have all your uh, news categories listed over here, and you can see at a quick glance everything that you're following, and of course you can tap on any one of these, and that's gonna get you news uh, from that particular channel or topic, okay? And you can also edit all this stuff, so if you tap on edit uh, over here, if you tap on edit, you can delete or add these, uh, you can search through the channels, topics, and also if you scroll all the way down, you'll see options like browse channels and topics, manage notifications for the news app. And uh, if you tap on this, that's what you get. So that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, a nice way to utilize extra space on the side over here while you can still enjoy the news. And if you tap on any article here, you can just read it as usual. And you can always tap this to go back. So that's the update on the news application, this sidebar over here, which is fantastic. Uh, the next update goes into the stocks application. The next app they have updated is the stocks application. So it's something that actually came into the iPad now. 
So you can launch the stocks application and it's going to have a nice dual view, just like the news application. Uh, on this side, you're going to have news, but all the news pertain to actual stock market. So if you want to read regular news, you go to the news app. But if you want to read news uh, in relation to the stock market, then you come here. So everything is right over here. Uh, one more thing I like is the uh, updates they have done over here uh, in iOS 12 to the stocks application. Now on the iPhone, it was a very basic stocks application, but as it came here, it's much better. You can tap on each stock and get some detailed information regarding that stock, including news, okay? So it's a very nice dashboard. And also you can, uh, Look at the stock's performance by day, by week, by month, by three months, and all that good stuff you can normally do on the actual websites. And you can even do something like this. You can uh, pick a range and see the difference, that the how well the uh, stock performed within that range uh, by using two fingers. So that's the updates on the stock application. Nice, beautiful little dashboard for people that are, in fact, interested in the stocks. Now they also added the voice memos. So if you uh, go over here, you're gonna see that we have the voice memos. Let's just allow that. And from here you can record voice messages as you please. You can edit them, uh, cancel it. And if I tap on record, it's got a nice little dashboard uh, that is recording my voice and give me this nice visual. When you're done, you pause and you click done and it does get saved right over here. And like I said, from here you can edit everything. You can delete stuff. Okay, uh, you can make this full screen if you want to, if you want to study a particular voice application and you can search, I mean, you can share that voice memo or delete it. So again, nice to have. Now you don't have to download an app from the app store to accomplish this. It can be done right on your iPad with a built-in app. Now, one massive feature that I added, they, they, that they added for iOS 12 is the screen time. So if I launch the settings, there is a new option here called the screen time. Uh, if I tap on the screen time, it's going to give me a bunch of statistics. Basically, it tells me how I have been using my iPad. So over here, uh, for three minutes, I've been using the news. For three minutes, I've been reading and referencing. And for two minutes, I've been doing productivity. Uh, if I tap on this, it gives me even more details and gives me exact apps that I've been wasting my time on or being productive. So the whole point of this is, uh, in my case, I'm only seeing 43 minutes of total use because I just did the upgrade. But uh, if you use your iPad for weeks, months, years, this is going to be some very useful information. It's going to show you what you are spending your time on and whether or not if it is worth it. Now, the iPad also allows you some options to actually manage uh, wasting of time. So you can schedule things like the downtime. If you tap on downtime, it's going to ask you a passcode for the screen time. You can make one on the spot. The first time it's going to ask you to just make one. So I can schedule downtime uh, and uh, with a start and end schedule. So that's going to make sure that I stay away from the iPad within that downtime. The iPad is just going to make that suggestion because it knows exactly what I'm doing on the iPad all the time. Now, what if you are going crazy with a particular app? Let's say you are playing too many games. What you can do then is you can actually use app limits. So if I tap on app limits, I can add a limit and I can pick a category and I can click add and I can say that uh, as far as gaming apps are concerned, I only want to waste one hour per day on actual games. So what happens is that it gets added as a limit and when you play more than one hour on any game, it knows what is a game and what's not a game. Uh, if you play more than one hour on any game, it's going to alert you and tell you that you have reached your limit for the day so you can get out of there and do something else that's more useful. And of course, as you set these things, you want to make sure that there are certain apps that do not get any limits. Apps like the phone, messages, FaceTime, maybe you have to read the news all the time, you can add the news in here, uh, just like this, if I click plus, the news is going to go up here. So it's not going to impose any of these limitations that you set here onto these apps. These apps are going to get uh, VIP access to you. And then you have a bunch of other things at the bottom here that are uh, that may or may not be that important. But again, these are just modifications you can make to the screen time. But the whole idea of the screen time is to give you access on how to manage your time with your iPad because these devices can be really addictive and sometimes without even realizing we waste a lot of time. Now you can manage that.
Now, one more brand new app they added on the uh, iOS 12 for the iPad is the Measure app. So the Measure app is right here. Uh, what the Measure app allows you to do is it allows you to, uh, I'm not gonna be able to show you right, right on the iPad here because I cannot move it around, uh, but uh, it allows you to measure objects using artificial uh, augmented reality in three dimensions. So basically you can point the iPad at any object uh, such as a suitcase or a square box or whatever and it's going to allow you to measure that product using the actual iPad without having to use manual tools. So those are some of the updates that I've uh, uh, noticed so far. There's some other things uh, such as improvements to Siri and there's going to be some Siri integration into actual apps uh, but that's not going to happen until everything is official. So Siri is now going to be able to have access to actual apps and work together with that app to help you out and make your life a little bit more easier. So that's iOS 12 for the iPad Pro and of course just about any other iPad out there. If you do have any questions, comments or concerns just drop them down below and make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come. And of course if you are a Twitter user, Facebook user, or an Instagram user, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online. Guys, have a fantastic day, and I do hope you enjoy iOS 12 on your iPad when it gets released down the road sometime around in September for consumers.